much as I try to avoid the news, here it is. Uh, this was sent to me from a, from a reader? Somebody. Somebody sent this to me. Uh, and let me give you the background on it before I jump right into the article. There's a professor, economics professor, George Mason, which I believe that's where Dr. Walter E. Williams was a teacher, a professor. Could be wrong. Uh, professor's name is Brian Kaplan, economics professor, and he wrote a book called The Case Against Education, and, and, and I'm glad you academics are on top of things that I was on top of 15 years ago. Good thing we didn't waste an entire generation of time and money. Now, now you guys at Jordan Peterson, slow draw, draw, Peter, oh, I'm going to get them liberals, hang on, oh, dang, let me get my Barney Fife bullet on my pocket for, oh, it's a revolver, let me open that. Now, this is lightning speed for academics. I'm going to put my bullet in. There we go. I'm going to fire back at the liberal big time academic. Patoo! Ooh, I'm a hero. Everybody pay attention to me. So you can you can either operate at the speed of light, me, or you can operate at the speed of snails, academics. But it's good. I just bust in people's balls. Nothing wrong with Mr. Kaplan, but just like, where the hell were you guys for the past decade and a half? It's good to see that only two decades worth of kids unnecessarily forked over $5 trillion of tuition money for worthless degrees. Glad it only took 20 years for professors. And these are, keep in mind, these are the independent thinking professors. These are the smarter than average ones. You still got 98% of the professors who will never admit that education is BS and that's just a money making operation. Anyway, so. Uh, Dr. Kaplan wrote a book called The Case Against Education, and it looks like he goes more through um, <clears throat> uh, the real value of what degrees confer upon you is um, is signaling to employers that you're a dumbass son of a bitch sticking four years. I mean, you will get fucked in the ass. You will bend over and spend, not only will you spread your ass cheeks for employers, you will, you will butter up your asshole with oil so that these employers can fuck you even more. That's basically, he's like, look at these suckers. They're going to spend four to six, masters preferred, I know. They're, they're going to jump through that hoop. Do you imagine how many other hoops they'll jump for through when they come work for us and they sign a mortgage and a car loan? So uh, all my crassness aside, it is good to see a professor... Somebody in the field actually writing about whether or not a degree is worth it. And so this book is, uh, he's also very well um, ensconced within other forms of traditional and and, uh, uh, untraditional media. So he has a large presence. So he comes out with this book. And there's no doubt in my mind, I haven't read it. I might actually read it, but there's no doubt in my mind, uh, well intended for the kids. Because I just don't, I don't charter that much maliciousness on somebody to take this unpopular and even uh, somewhat self-sabotaging position to his own career because he's he's a he's a professor. So I I'm, I'm thinking like there's some intellectual honesty here that should be your hat should be tipped and and all that for uh, Dr. Kaplan. Now, this put the sand in somebody's vagina, namely Sarah Carr. Now, who is Sarah Carr? Well, let me read the article, then you're going to see where I'm going to go with this here later. She wrote uh, article for the Washington Post. She doesn't like Dr. Kaplan's book. And you say, well, Aaron, what what does she care? Isn't this good? Isn't this for the children? Isn't that what leftists are for? Oh, no. You see, because Miss Carr is going to show you who it's truly for here in this article. All right. So here we go. Is Education a Waste of Time and Money by Sarah Carr? This is February 16th. Sarah Carr is the editor of the Teacher Project. Teachers! Right off the bat. See, veteran listeners know immediately... You've already been able to diagnose this. What's the teacher project? What is that? Does that help? Does that help the kids? The the children's. We want to help the children's. Well, how about not having them go for $150,000 in debt for a degree they don't need? All right, heck, let's just draw the conclusion now because these people are so simple. They're so basic. We can already assume. She is protecting her industry. She doesn't want to work hard. She's a professor, teacher, guy. Whatever. It's big education, and she needs you kids to fork over and sign away your lies, $75,000 to get worthless degrees. Because otherwise, she's out of a part-time job because she's a professor, a journalist, you see. 
Sarah Carr is the editor of the Teacher Project, an education reporting fellowship at the Columbia School of Journalism. You want to talk about another dead uh, appendage that the human race doesn't need? You want to talk about a gallbladder journalism school? An author of Hope Against Hope, which tells the story of the New Orleans schools. Here's the actual... See, so you already know. You already know. For those of you who knew, I'll explain it to you here in a little more detail as we investigate. Well, the past two decades, a cultural all mantra has overtaken the school reform movement with educated reform movement. They're telling me that 20, 25 years ago, everyone had to go to college. What movement is this? Are people dying from old age of this movement? Is Professor Pearson still loading up his Barney Five bullet, putting in it? Oh, I'm going to shoot down the establishment, pitch you. With education leaders across the country committing themselves to helping more low-income first-generation college students make it through four-year universities. In schools across the country, teachers coat hallways with college banners, take children as young as middle school on college tools, and prep even elementary-age youngsters with chants like, we get the knowledge to go to college. You are brainwashing these poor kids. This is no different than the indoctrination. But mark my words, Sarah, if you're listening to this, and I know you're probably a fan of Christianity, this is no different than the indoctrination we got when I went to parochial school. When I was forced to go to that damn concentration camp and had Jesus shoved up my ass, they immediately gave us indoctrination, indoctrination right off the bat. We were going to go to what? Luther College, and there was some other college. I think Luther College was in Iowa, and there's another one in La Crosse. Like, they had us lined up. That's because you want to make more money. You want They wanted more Christians. You want more leftists. You want you are just feeding them to the big education machine. And I'm not saying that like some hippy-dippy hi, uh, uh, protester. You are, you are programming and brainwashing these young kids as young as middle school to go, hey, look at college. Isn't this fun and exciting? Well, by the way, it's going to cost you $100,000 of your life, and, and we're going to challenge you into most worthless degrees, but at least you're our bitch and we get your money. I mean, uh, at least you're educated. Uh-huh. And how dare you do it to low income and first generation, which means uh, immigrants, non-white, non-Native uh, American type students. How dare you? See, this is the hypocrisy of the left. Or, or a, a, an unforgivable, astounding amount of ignorance on Ms. Carr's part. Where they actually think they're helping these kids, indoctrinating them and, and crippling them with debt for worthless degrees. I don't know which it is. Are you too stupid to know that your degree in journalism is worthless? Or do you fully well know and the only ride you got left is to keep feeding more virgins to the volcano at the altar of fucking higher education and the liberal arts so you old, aged, baby boomer and Gen X fucks can parasite off these kids until you're hopefully dead? It's amazing. I just want to... All I want, all I want when I die, all I want is the kids to say, you know what, that guy was on our side. He was an asshole. He told us he broke our dreams and busted our balls, but he didn't ask us to fork over no hundred thousand dollars for a degree in journalism. He told us to go into STEM and engineering and the sciences and program. Heck, he told us not even go to college, go to the trades, go to the military. He wrote books on it, I recall, but we didn't read it because oh, it was librarians kicked it out of their library one time because it was sexist. Uh, educators are motivated by studies that consistently show the economic payoff of a college degree. People with a bachelor's degree earn 84% more than those with a high school diploma, according to a report from Georgetown University Center on Education and Warfare. I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet nuts to bolts, uh, that is historical looking. Just like when, when oh, and, and is this also when, when the baby boomers say, you got to go to college. Well, what, when it cost 30 cents for a master's degree back in 1971? Yeah, I'm sure now, in the past, people went to college 30-odd years ago. They did make more money than those that didn't. But you don't care about the few. We don't, we don't do math. We don't look at education bubbles or housing bubbles or inventory or supply. Nah. Armed with such figures, there is indeed a compelling case to be made for expanding access to college education is key, if not the key component in the fight against entrenched economic inequality in the United States. No, now that's a lie. That is a lie. Carr, you're lying. You pulled one statistic that is backwards looking, not forward thinking. And on top of it, if not the key component against entrenched economic inequality, how about this? Poor people stop having kids they can't afford. How, how about we start with that? 
That's the number one cause of poverty because it directly affects the number one measure of poverty, income per capita or wealth per capita, anything per capita. Because guess what? Don't know if you could do division because you're a journalism major. It's more capita. The uh, denominator is larger than the numerator and it lowers the overall ratio. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do the math. I know math is hard for women. Oozing. Uh, so right off the bat, you, this and this is standard Columbia School of Journalism type people. This is just journalists in, in general. They have an agenda. They're pushing it. They don't actually care about the poor people or the minorities or the young or the children or the future. Because if they did, they'd have the balls and the courage and the spine to say, hey, look, you want to not be poor? Stop having kids you can't afford. All right? You want to not be poor? Don't major in stupid shit like I did. She's not going to tell you that. See, this is why I believe... It's, are they devils or dupes? Does she actually believe it? I'm starting to get the impression she's a devil because she's the, the, she's the professor. She has a vested economic interest in lying to you people. So you guys go and sign away on your, your kids' student loans and you sign away on your own student loans. And, oh, we need to do any government bailouts like the bankers. Bernie Sanders come... We see, but we're better than the bankers because we're stupid, idiotic students who are so amazingly independent-minded and have these great critical thinking skills. Well, which is it? You're supposed to, like, bow down at these kids and tell all the educators in the college, oh, you're so intelligent. Well, then why do I need to keep bailing Are you that stupid? We need to keep bailing you out? Balderdash argues Brian Kapler, professor of economics at George Mason University, a self-proclaimed libertarian. Well, how do you sell? You either are or you aren't. What do you mean he's self-proclaimed? He is. He's a self-proclaimed Christian. Well, that probably means he is a Christian. In the case against education, rights the government should stop using tax dollars to fund education of any kind. All schools, primary, secondary, and university alike should be solely funded by fees and private charity. Pell grants and the stu- federal subsidies that help millions of low-income students afford college should be cut. Uh, Kaplan is author of The Selfish Reasons to Have More Kids, in which he argues that nature matters more than nurture and child rearing, meaning parents needn't work nearly so hard to groom their kids into model students and citizens. Kaplan bold and provocative conclusion in The Case Against Education is based on a raft of statistics, which he presents ad nauseum throughout his book. Yeah, unlike you who presented one, I'd rather have a plethora, a cacophony of statistics, than one that's skewed, dated, and backwards looking. His argument hinges on the idea that the main value of education, and particularly more advanced degrees, comes not from helping prepare us to be better citizens, thinkers, and workers, but it's, okay, let's stop here. So you, young lady, old lady, think that the purpose of education to become a better citizen, thinker, and a worker? The point of a a better education, of higher education, is to get a job, right? You don't need to pay some washed-up professor at the Columbia School of Journalism $300 a credit, probably more, because it's, I think it's private, uh, to become a better citizen or thinker. You can just listen to podcasts and get books at the library for free or tune in to Stephen Molyneux. You don't need to pay hypocrites, these, these aged Gen X and baby boomer profes- uh, professorial vampires that want to suck the financial lifeblood out of you kids so you get some worthless piece of paper that you can't get a job with anyway. And if, it's, and if there's like a cheaper way to become better citizens, thinkers, and workers, I don't know, workers, I can almost agree with you there, but that assumes that you know, you're going to get actual skills and trades. But the citizens and thinkers, well, you demand me, and me, if you're a good citizen, you say, well, kids are spending a lot of money on education. Is there a way we could get them to be better citizens and thinkers? Ah, I know. Let's have civics class. Oh, we already have it in college, uh, K through 12. Oh, we need more money. Shh, don't tell them that. We need them to take English composition again in freshman comp. No, 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 not freshman as in high school. Freshman comp is in college. Well, because it's English professors, what are we going to do for money? I don't want to work a real job. Do you, Mike? Yeah. So let's tell them they need a bunch of prerequisites. Shh. Don't don't say it so loud. It is free to become a better citizen. They should already have this in civics class. Thinkers, they should, what, what, 13 years if you conclude uh, kindergarten? You're telling me 18-year-old kids don't have it? No, no, no. This is just you guys stretching along and milking these children for as long as you possibly can. From kindergarten to college, you guys are sucking the fucking money out of them and indebting them. And again, if the biggest hypocrisy among academics, especially the left, is how you all claim to be for the children. You rape these kids. You fucking rape them. That's what you do. 
I, I go to sleep good tonight. I go to sleep at pretty much well. I sleep very well every night. I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, his argument hinges on the idea that the main value of education, and particularly more advanced degrees, comes not from helping prepare us to be better citizens, thinkers, and workers, but from what's known as educational signaling. Education and degrees help ratify pre-existing traits such as persistence, intelligence, and conformity to social norms. Big, huge, uh, bold should be on conformity. Because you have got to be a sheep and a lemming combined. Sheep lemming. You genetically combined it together. So you go run off a cliff while buying on the way down to your death to say, I'm going to go to school for six years, get an MBA, and then commit my life and screw my family to an employer. Conventional education mostly helps students by raising their status, he writes. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with him because he's an economist, he's done research, he has more statistics, and he's not. As you're going to find out, he's got a much better background than Ms. Carr. On a whole host of measures, income, job satisfaction, happiness, health, Kaplan offers his own estimates on how much education matters, nearly always concluding that it's far less beneficial than conventional wisdom or existing research would have us believe. Well, I'd have to go along with that. Because... If you some macroeconomic women's happiness is going down, life expectancy increases are slowing down, uh, economic growth is slowing down, labor force participation rate is are down, unemployment rate though is down. That's a good thing, uh, but underemployment is way up, and I doubt anyone's done a lot of research into this. I very much highly doubt. I bet you Kaplan's over on the on the cutting edge of this, and I know it's anecdotal, but how many articles do I have to hear about millennials not being able to pay back their student loans and having trouble finding jobs? Why do you think his, his book and my book are so popular? Way more popular than yours, I might add, Miss Carr. For instance, when computing education's benefits via V health, he cites a host of reasons the effect may not be so great as presumed. More years of education may indeed correlate to a longer life expectancy as documented in numerous studies. Yes, we have to go back to generations and we're talking about life expectancy so we're talking about baby boomers, possibly the silent generation. Yes! Back then, 50 years ago, a college degree was worth it. But the millennials aren't even... Shit, half of them still live at home. They're still shitting in their diapers. Uh, but perhaps that's partly because of reverse causation. Poor health impend- impeding educational progress rather than educational progress promoting good health. Oh, wow. Go reach. Go reach a little bit. Hang on. Let's go get Rubber Man from the Marvel comics. Maybe he could reach a little bit further. In the, in the end, he concludes with a breezy confidence. And my best guess is that the true health benefit of a year of education is somewhere between nothing and 0.02 steps on a four-step scale. All right, I'm inclined to agree with him because he did the math. Now, he even he will admit that it's a best guess. You know, economics, if he's a good economist, I'm inclined to believe he is. He's like, yeah, I can, it's all estimates. Kaplan is more optimistic about vocational than academic education. Oh, no, what are you going to do, Miss Carr? You don't want to learn to become a mechanic or an electrician. You'd actually have to work. Your hands would have to get dirty. You couldn't pontificate liberal leftist shit like this on the Washington Post. Then you'd have to teach kids and boys. You'd have to run into boys. Kaplan is more optimistic about vocational than academic education, arguing that it does more to improve high school graduation rates, raise income, and reduce unemployment. Yet even improved or expanded technical training is not worth an outlay of taxpayer money. No, how about this? Here, here's a concept. It's not your money. Huh? And then there's student loans. You're still borrowing, so it's not like the government just gives you the money. I mean, you got to pay it back. But did it ever dawn on you, Miss Carr, that people are entitled to their money because they sacrifice part of their finite, uh, finite, limited lives to get it? And just because they invested it and, and sacrificed it more wisely than you did and make more per hour than you did, doesn't give you the right to go and take their money and give it to some other kids so you can feel popular. And here's the other thing. I know this is foreign concept to you, Miss Carr, especially being a journalism major and, and, and all that other stuff. Uh, you see, when you go to a technical school like a Dunwoody or your local community college and you become a mechanic or electrician, you make money. I know that's not the case with journalism majors. I know you guys just sit there with your debts and you expect Bernie Sanders and the mechanics that you mocked and ridiculed who went to vocational school to end up paying more taxes to bail you people out of your money or your student loans. But you see, these guys actually make money 
They only go to school for two years, not the four to eight that you guys require. And then they go work and they make money. And then they're richer than you, liberal arts graduates. Oh, uh, beep, beep, boo, boop, boo. What do I sound like that guy from uh, Fat Albert? Who be say be Fat Albert? Hey, Fat Albert! What are you gonna do with him? Tom Donald? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! <laughs> That's a great cartoon. I know you millennial idiots have seen it. Oh, man, the guys, they all run together at the same... It, 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 never mind. It, it, it's Fat Albert, you guys got to watch the cartoon. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, in his view, government should get out of the way and let and take stock of all the opportunities the labor market provides. That includes reinstating child labor. Yeah, I'm sure he wants, like, little five-year-olds. Yeah, uh-huh. Hey, I worked when I was 12. Nothing wrong with kids going and opening up a little uh, sandwich shop or lemonade stand. Nothing wrong with doing a little bit of a labor in the fields. I know your hands are so soft with all the moisturizer and typing. You're typing, you type as a journalism major. For someone who shapes at Kaplan's often specious reasoning and disagrees with most of his conclusions, there's still something refreshing about the cheeky questions he raises about the role of vocational education. Oh, are you going to admit that you can't change your own oil and you got to pay somebody else with a fraction of the... Uh, uh, education that you have, but the same earnings potential. The value of college and the mismatch between educational offerings and job opportunities. Moreover, the conversation about education is often dominated by debates over governance. Who should run schools and control the purse strings? Even the debate over the common core curricular standards centered less on what should be taught than on perceived or misperceived federal intrusion into states and districts' jurisdictions over their schools. The perennial question of who has control. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have kids... This is just another argument to homeschool your kids. Um, there's now an online high school you can go. Uh, I think multiple states offer online high schools. Just just send, like, you know when your kid's getting shot or beat up or having to go to school with the normies, conformies, and inferiors? Just, just homeschool your kid, all right? Or have your kid go to school online, all right? You don't need, you don't need to be at, at a high school. You don't need to be there. You don't need to actually be in college, which is why I think Western Governors University and ASU Online are awesome developments. But why go to the indoctrination camp? And that's what K through college is. Why go there? Give these frauds your money while they're arguing and bitching and whining about who controls and what are we going to teach? And you know what? Fly above it like an AWAC. Just be above the battle. Go online. Get your degree. Be done with it. Well, how will you know to socialize with other students? These kids don't even know how to socialize with themselves. They're all looking at their phones, sitting next to each other, not saying a word. They're all online anyway. Kaplan eschews de such debates over who should run the schools, dismissing public funding for private schools, a.k.a. vouchers that many libertarians champion as an, ins as an insufficient tweak to a badly broken system. Instead, he focuses his scrutiny on what students learn in school and his own estimates of how much value it brings to them to society at large. Kaplan's intriguing line of inquiry could, in different hands, lead to a truly constructive debate and possible reckoning. But in addition to his offering opinion under the guise of data, yeah, nasty data, we don't like no facts, there are two major fallacies and dangers to Kaplan's argument, both relating to equality. Wow! Are we going to do the whole, we because vagina and not white skin again? Is that where we're going to go? Because you haven't done it enough. We never do it. These poor college kids don't get enough diversity and sexism in class. We got to go with this route. What's it like having no new ideas or lacking the intellectual temerity to, to like, be honest? Why does it always have to go to hiding behind the color of your skin or vagina? First, his analysis treats education and teachers as a monolith. That is to say, pretty universally a waste of time. Yes, he's right. When he's talking about education, he can't go and individually discuss every teacher. He makes significant distinctions only when it comes to subject areas. Deriding the humanities as Mickey Mouse majors, for instance. Yes, he's right. They are Mickey Mouse. You, dear lady, have a worthless degree. You have a Mickey Mouse major, which we're going to address later. With this largely macro lens, he misses an important opportunity to scrutinize the startling gaps in education quality across states, districts, and institutions, schools, and teachers. Well, that's not, I don't think that's the point of his book. I think he wanted in general, like, what, look, he, he doesn't want to write an academic paper that's going to be thousands of pages long. He's just saying, hey, kids, be careful before you go to college. 
He had drilled down to compare the quality of education and attendance, student, and societal outcomes in a small group of high schools of varying quality, for instance. Had he, had he, we might get a very different view of both the role of signaling and the state of the American education system. Look, <clears throat> that's not the point of his book, and you want to you solve the, the problem of education you know, in the inner city or poor schools. One, have a father around. Start finding against signal motherhood. Insist on having a dad there. Advocate not having kids out of wedlock. Uh, put focus back on the family. All right? And then have kids raised properly. Spank your children. I know that's a little problem for millennials now, and, and we transcend race here. Little Jimmy has ADHD, HD, 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 and the Spurgs, and the Aughts, and the Isms, and the Bipolars, and he's social. He's four, and he's socially anxious. Give him drugs. This pussyfooting around these leftists do to solve big major problems when all it takes is calling out the emperor has no clothes. Stop having kids you can't afford. Hey, go on birth. No, no. Hey, hey, Matilda, Matilda, come here. Right? You go on birth control and you can fuck as many guys as you want. Right? And then, then you can come inside you. It don't matter. No, it won't matter. It's called birth control. And then after you get your CPA, then you can find a nice guy. Bob, and marry him, and then you can have children. But if, if you want to fuck, go fuck. But here's some birth control, and don't have no kids when you're 15, 16, 17, 18, or 19, or 20, okay? All right, that's it. And make sure the guy's wrong. Make sure Bob's a nice guy. Yeah, before you breed with men, make sure they're good, reliable, stable men who will be there and not quote-unquote run off and be the deadbeat dad. How can you tell? Well, if his hat's on sideways and... And he didn't graduate from high school and his pants are drooping down in between his knees and his crotch. That might be a sign he's not going to stick around. Just saying. You know? And if he's on meth, you know, he's in the hoodang diggly and he's from a trailer park. God, he's a pickup truck, but he can barely afford the pickup truck. And the, he'd rather have his double wide trailer be repossessed than his pickup truck. That also is probably not a good idea. No, probably not a good idea to marry that guy. No. Doesn't speak English and he's in an English speaking country. That's another Probably not going to be around. Probably not. Okay, now you go find a nice nuclear family with a good Ward Cleaver father who will install discipline and respect into your children. And then when you send them off to school, I think the schools will improve. No, we can't do that. We just can't do that. We have to do something polite and nice and kind and ultimately fruitless that won't solve the problem. And ultimately damages another, what, five, six generations of children because ain't nobody got the balls? You care about minorities and disadvantaged and poor people so much, you're not going to tell them the truth about their situation. And you're going to further then condemn them and their future offspring into the same fucking shit. Because you just care so much about the children. That's not the mission of a man who declares that all things considered, I favor full separation of school and state, nor is it his mission to fully consider the impact of his not so modest proposal of on the country's poorest citizens, the kind of people who would never be able to afford an education, the public funding of all kinds disappear. Well, they're not getting a great education now. I don't really know what, what good it does. What was it? People graduating from some of the poorer schools are reading at a sixth grade level. I, I will disagree I, with uh, Dr. Kaplan. Um, you, you can't just not educate the poor. I will agree with the lady on this. You can't. You just can't. You've got to do a voucher of some kind. Although, I don't know. I'm interpreting what this lady is saying about his book. <clears throat> so, I, you know, Lord knows should he take him out of context. Kaplan fleetingly addresses what he calls our commitment, to, commitment as a society to our least fortunate members over the course of two out of nearly 300 pages. What? Uh, he concludes that covering the cost of education for all is like covering the cost of everyone's diamond wedding rings. No, that's different. A subsidy that diminishes the value of a good by making it universally accessible. To detect subsidies downside of social ju for social justice, you must dwell on the opportunities the poor have lost because of credential inflation. That's true. When most Americans didn't finish high schools, dropouts faced a little stigma in the labor market. Well, see, now that, you got to go cracking down. you got to crack skulls. And if I was president, I probably would even... I pull in like all the chamber of commerces and the large employers say you're going to knock it off with this master's preferred bullshit and bachelor's degree required 
And we're replacing college degrees with an accreditation system that people can self-test out of, very much like the IT industry. And you're going to honor and inspect those tests and certifications just as you much will a bachelor's degree from these bogus Mickey Mouse schools that you all insist people go to. As in selfish reasons to have more kids, his argument seems to hinge on a dangerous faith in biological determinism that borders on a defense of institutionalized classism. In an unlikely event that it's embraced, this, this is where the, the liberal leftist psycho babble speak comes in. She, she has to mask what he's saying and what his, his intention is to, hey, knock it off with this education bubble. We don't all need doctorates. Uh, and we should eliminate, oh God, you should eliminate colleges. And now she's going biological determinism. What does that mean in the defense of institutionalized classism? No, he's making it so that poor people don't need to go to school for six years just to get out of poverty. In the unlikely event that it's embraced, I worry more that by entering the mainstream, his ideas may subtly and incrementally push the debate in the wrong direction. No, debate cannot go in a wrong direction. Only you would think that. What, you know, and what's, what's the debate? Young kids also wake up and realize $150,000 for a women's studies degree is bullshit. His proposal would transform a admittedly deep, unequal society into a serfdom, more permanently consigning low... No, you don't know that. How does that happen? Hey, all of a sudden we get rid of the fact you have to now spend four to six years of your life getting a degree. You know what? Poor rich kids, they're not going to... Well, I take that back. Kids have been, you guys have done such a good job at brainwashing kids to think they're entitled to the college experience that they may still want to go. That's the only reason I can think kids today are signing up when you look at the price tag and the, the poor employment prospects. But if you all of a sudden got rid of college, say, you know what, we got these tests now you can take. You can take it anytime, study anytime, study from home. You don't have to drive nowhere. You don't have to pay for parking. You don't have to pay for tuition. It's all free. You take these tests now. They're like DSST tests uh, provided by the government. And you could test it, you know, this level, that level, you know, like CFA, CPAs, uh, CCNA, all these other type of certifications. And that's it. We're not doing college anymore. I think that, and, and if anything, you know, tell me if I'm wrong here, Miss Carr, do you actually think sending a poor black student from the poor inner ghetto city to go get a degree or a master's in African American studies, you think that's going to help them? Or did you just squash out whatever potential hope he had? at becoming something great. Because you, here's the thing, you don't make money as an African-American studies professor. Well, you make some, but not a lot. You certainly don't make any money just having a bachelor's degree in it. So here's this poor kid coming out of a ghetto barrio trailer park. You give him some bullshit hogwash, easy liberal arts degree, oh, major in social justice. Oh, and then by the way, if you can't find a, degree, a job, now go now go to law school and fight for social justice. And now they're graduating, what, $300,000 in debt between the two degrees? Oh, that's really helping out the minorities there, lady. You sure are thinking about this critically. More permanently consigning low-income citizens to minimum wage jobs that require next to no literacy or numeracy skill or no jobs at all. Oh, you mean like all the baristas with their fucking master's degree in English and literature and journalism? Do you hear yourself? You guys can see why I like this article. The case against education raises some important questions, but beyond that, it offers little more than dangerous, extravagant ideology masking as creative data analysis. All right. Um... So you were asking, oh, Aaron, you're pretty harsh on her. Well, let's take a look at these two people. I like to look behind the articles. Let's look up David Kaplan. Oh, wait. No, that's a, wait, David Kaplan? There's a Dr. David Kaplan of a medical doctor. Brian Kaplan. Brian Kaplan. Brian Kaplan. BrianKaplan.com, American Economist. Is he, uh, oh, he went to Berkeley. Poor bastard. And he came up with this all on his own? Okay, Wikipedia. Let's do a little clarity test. Wow, look at that 90s hair. <laughs> he is an economist. Holy cow, look at this guy. <laughs> okay. Um, BA in economics, PhD in economics. I'm not impressed with that. Uh, you guys know economics is largely a worthless degree in my realm, but like finance and all that, even chemistry or biology, it, you put a fair amount of effort into it. He should have majored in engineering and 
it probably would have done. All right, he, uh, professor, he has no real world working experience, it looks like. Uh, he's got some books out. Reason to have more kids, our knuckle capitalism, and Rand. All right, a guy who happens to be politically aligned with me, but one I have not a terrible amount of respect for because he's just parked his ass in academia the entire time. Now, even with that, I don't want to say low standard. This is, you know, he's not evil. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm sorry, Doctor Kaplan, if you're listening. I'm just not impressed with academians. I mean, if you went out and did it. Oh, he's in charge of a econo- econolog. Oh, okay, all right, that's it. All right, so he has. He's been a professor. How long has he been a professor? He's married, got four kids. All right, not terribly impressed. But his book, let's take a look. Case Against Education. Case Against Education. My education is some time waste of money, despite being immensely. Okay, he's got 33 customer reviews. And it came out, when did it come out? January 30th, month and change ago. It is ranked, wow, number two in education theory and administration. Our ministry is actually reading this, number four in higher education vocational. It is number 3,000, which is great overall for Amazon. That is amazing. That book is on fire. To give you an example, my best-selling book, Bachelor Pad Economics, usually is between 50,000th and the 100,000th place. And one of my worst-selling books, Reconnaissance Man, is about 500, 600,000th place. All right, so he's got 33 reviews, four stars. I'm, I bet you it's skewed. I bet you. Oh, no. A couple honest reviews there. I thought the left would come out and just hammer it away with one-star reviews. Um, so 33 reviews. Now, let's look up Miss Sarah Carr. Well, let's look up her book first. Hang on. Hope Against Hope. Sarah Carr. <laughs> you just wonder which is going to be, which is going to be uh, more of a practical book. You can just tell. All right, now Miss Carr has hope against hope. Let's go to the paperback. Keep the data uh, similar. It was written four years ago. Guess how many reviews, ladies and gentlemen? Now keep in mind, she works for the Washington Post. This is a point I keep making. These people on the internet and all media and, and even the mainstream media, they are not as big as you think they are. Just because they're on the TV or the boob tube does not make them big. A lot of these people work for peanuts. Right? This this is not Ernest Hemingway reporting from uh what was it? Was it did he was he the one that fund the Spanish Civil War? It's not him. Right? This is just some gal with a degree from the Columbia School of Journalism. Now she wrote a book. Now you think with all of her connections working at a at a you know a real mainstream media entity, Washington Post, being in journalism, she'd have a book out there that was doing pretty well. No. 17 customer reviews. If you, now the reason I point out reviews is reviews is a is a proxy for sales. And uh, Dr. Kaplan has doubled the amount of sales in two months, month and a half, than it did uh, the touchy-feely book that Miss Carr wrote in uh, over four years. Rank is 700,000th place. So that's actually up. I'm sure it's probably because she wrote this book. It's reviewed about on par, same kind of star rating as Dr. Kaplan's. But here, here's, well, hang on, let's, before I go further, hang on, let's do it. Come on, Claire, you had, you had an idea. Sarah Carr. And here she is. Okay, gentlemen, yes, it's what you're thinking. Look it up. You know what I'm talking about. I've worked as an education journalist for the last 14 years. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My book, Hope Against Hope, tells the story of the New Orleans schools after Hurricane Katrina through the eyes of those most affected by the dramatic education changes. I now lead an education reporting fellowship called The Teacher Project at the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism and serve as contributing editor to the Hatchikin Report I have written for the Atlantic Major. Da, 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 da. Slate, there you go. There's Slate, New Orleans Public Radio, blah, blah, blah. 
what my students taught me. Da da da. Okay. Here's what it boils down to. Dr. Carr, even though being an academian and never saying foot in the in the real world, is more successful and will probably forever be more successful than Miss Carr. Uh, the courage that it takes to write a book against your own profession, again, earns some respect in, in, in my mind. Uh, but his book sales, the fact that he is a professor full-time and doesn't have on his resume all this ancillary BS, doesn't indicate to me, it proves to me, that Miss Carr is barely making ends meet, trying, barely getting by. And this is the point I've made about people right on Slate, XO Jane, social media, Washington Post, Huffington Post, all these j- journalism in general. It's not a job. It's a hobby. You look at these people, you know, and I am, I am, I am the very low hurdle you have to clear. If you have, if you are part, if your profession is being in journalism, being in the media, and you have less Twitter followers than me, you're not cutting it. And that's why you see a lot of people, they will list scores. Me and the great one went to listen to the last podcast. I forgot the the lady's name. She was a journalist and she listed at least seven places she was writing. Why are you writing at seven places? Oh, because not one of them pays enough. Now, both are in academia. Both should be ashamed of that. Sorry, Dr. Kaplan. I doubt Mr. Carr is capable of shame. But this is just sour notes. This is freaking out. This is, oh my gosh, he's exposing us. No, I need to protect it. Because what? What do you got, Dr. Carr? What do you have? Some, some government grant money funding this project you got? On my dime, no doubt. And and then what happens two years after the money runs out? Do you have to count? You got to go and scramble again for it. You you majored in easy stuff. You majored in slop. You majored in sloth. You followed your heart, and the money does not follow because you, unlike Dr. Kaplan, who was an economist, you didn't study economics. And your article highlights how delinked, how untethered, unanchored you are from reality. And it's so far that you, you, you don't see how you're lying. It's not lies. Again, I don't know if you're, if you're the devil or the dupe, if you're telling the honest truth or not. But your policies you advocate, let's put it that way, do not help those you claim to be helping. There is a humongous, probably the biggest problem I see in the United States right now, if we ignore the national debt, so you know, all that boring economic stuff, but something that might actually be tangibly done, is to stop lying to these kids about the value of a college education. And do I can't even, I mean, it's like I get people pissed off at me because I tell them, hey, you might want to consider a different degree. Trying to help them. People are so coddled, so weak, so soft, so, so I guess their life has nothing else of value that they only point to their education. And maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is an, oh, we need education, education, because that's all you have, because you certainly ain't making a career or profession of it. There's no money. So all what, this sheepskin? Do people like masturbate with their degrees nowadays? What is going on? When do you realize it was a scam? And when do you admit to younger people so they could learn from your mistakes? I, I know, I know, I know. And what? A record number of kids are going to go to school next year. Two-thirds are going to major in the liberal arts, which is bullshit. And then, just like the millennials, they're going, we, we need to get bailed out. And they're not going to learn jack all shit. And here's ultimately the problem I have. Dr. Kaplan's route would solve that problem and stave off an inevitable economic collapse, or at least a pretty good recession, or just a slowing down or a taxing of the economy. Mrs. Carr approach would be more government money, same old shit we've been doing since, what, 1965, 1970? And just keep shipping those kids to school, no matter what, no, go major in liberal arts, whatever you want. Look how happy I am. Oh, so we got that there. Um, What else we got? <clears throat> You know what? Maybe I'll do some sponsors. Let's do some sponsors. Oh, shit. We had so many sponsors. All right. 
If you want to support me and getting the truth out there and you have no use for airing my spot, like you have no use for the products, you have no use whatsoever, which I find hard to believe because I have an Amazon affiliate program, so you should be able to find something there. Uh, but if you have absolutely no use for any of my products, you can always donate to my Patreon account. You go to patreon.com slash Aaron Clary, A-A-R-O-N-C-L-A-R-E-Y. Not Cleary, not Clarny, not Clory, Clary. It's not Abagnale, not Abagnale, it's Abagnale. So you can do that. Uh, academiccomposition.com. Hey, if either of you guys were listening, you'll love this sponsor, academiccomposition.com. Look, smart corporations outsource the worthless crap they don't want to do. And colleges and universities, hey, would you like that nice shiny degree in biology? Too bad for you. You got to take uh, Dr. Carr's and Dr. Kaplan's degrees in economics and journalism. Why? Uh, so they have employment. You don't really need it. It has nothing to do with biology, but you got to take two years of worthless liberal arts craps prereqs because what else would these worthless pieces of shit do with their worthless fucking degrees? So let's enslave the children because they love them so much. The children's are our future. They just love you kids so much. That's why they're going to force you to go to school two years beyond what's necessary and charge you $300 of credit and $400 for a textbook because they love the children's. I love the children's. Anyway, uh, so here's the deal. Um, Academic composition will write your stupid liberal arts papers for you because it has nothing to do with your degree. It's stupid. Yeah, you get busted for academic fraud if you're stupid and get caught. Uh, but frankly, uh, just th- those degrees have nothing to do with your degree. Uh, those classes have nothing to do with your degree. They're a waste of time. And if you need other time, like if you go work up money, they just don't want to do it because you're getting sick and tired of writing, I hate white males. Marx was great. Let's suck. Uh, 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 you know, Engels, Dick, uh, whatever they're having you right nowadays. When you're done with that, <laughs> just just ha- pay someone to do it, academiccomposition.com. Contact Alex, let him know the captain sent you. And then if you happen to graduate with a liberal arts degree, one, I'm terribly sorry, two, you're pretty much unemployable, but three, hey, instead of working as a barista, here's another option for you. Why don't you go write for academic composition? If you have a worthless degree in the worthless liberal arts, that means you can write bullshit and rather effectively and efficiently, I might add. And he pays. It pays per page. All right. So don't, how much does it pay? I think it's $10 a page. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. Uh, it's not fun. It, none of those classes are fun. Uh, but uh, And they're not necessary, but they are necessary if you want your worthless piece of paper. So you could go work from there. You can also work from <clears throat> in his marketing department. He's, none of these jobs are exciting. I'm always amazed. Oh, it's uh, kind of boring. Really? Really? Writing liberal arts indoctrinated leftist slop over and over and over again gets boring? I wouldn't say. Um, and marketing, really? Posting ads on Craigslist get boring? Yeah, you don't say. Uh, but yeah, it is boring, but it pays, and you can do it from the comforts of your own home. So go to academiccomposition.com and check it out there. My Amazon affiliate program. If you do have something you want to buy online, do not go to amazon.com. Go to my site, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com, and then you click on the Amazon banner. And then you go buy. And the reason you go to my site first is Amazon. No, you came through my Amazon affiliate program. And then I get a commission on your sales. You don't pay anything extra. I just get a 6 to 7% cut. All right? So if you get into the good habit, the good habit of going to my Amazon affiliate program, doing all, not some, all of your online shopping, that would be grand. XYZ.net.au. That's the website for all of you people who are in Australia or those of you who aren't in Australia but are interested in Australian politics and what's going on down there. From the Red Pill Masculine perspective, if you are sick and tired of the ABC, that's the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. That's like their BBC or uh, NPR. It's their government mouthpiece. If you're getting sick and tired of you know journalism majors telling you what to think and how you're bad because you have penai, uh, just tune into the guys over there. Locker room talk, good talk, stuff like that. And not beat around the bush, made up academic words. It's literal writing and posting and other good stuff. XYZ.net.au. BusinessBuyerAdvantage.com. In order to get ahead and take advantage of tax laws and maximize your lifestyle, you need to be in business for yourself. It's faster, cheaper, easier, and less risky than getting a doctorate in journalism. Oh, no, that's not part of the script. It's faster, cheaper, easier, and less risky to buy an already successful business that is to try and, try and do a startup. Access tons of free information about how to buy or sell a business at businessbuyeradvantage.com.
dot com. Uh, it is if you like what you see and you want to go deeper by taking the Business Buyer Adv- Advantage online course, use the discount code Clary to get a special price. That's businessbuyeradvantage.com. The Clary Podcast is also sponsored by akingscastle.com, A being part of that website. A King's Castle is a place for men who want to leave a legacy in advanced Western civilization. With daily articles by various authors, lively commenters who have both serious discussion and fun-loving jokes, a forum for more serious discussions, and even the occasional lulzy troll, you'll want to make a King's Castle a daily visit or add it to your RSS feed. Whether you're a father, someone who wants to become one, or just a masculine man looking for more than just banging women, a King's Castle is the, new, is the next step in Master Sites that will encourage you to become a man with a long-term purpose. Stop by kingscastle.com today, and they have a YouTube channel. mtfunow.com, meaning manthefuckupnow.com. When we started our brand, we just wanted to sell cool t-shirts and hoodies. And they got nice hoodies. I got one of their hoodies. It's very nice. I got a mug, but I left it down in Vegas. Uh, But the brand quickly became something more than just another apparel brand. It became a symbol for people who were fed up with the direction the country is going. MTFU is about taking responsibility for your decisions and actions. MTFU is about standing up for what you believe in despite what other people think. MTFU is about being the person you were meant to be instead of what other people want you to be. It has nothing to do with gender, race, or economics. It has to do with living your life to your potential and helping others around you do the same. Lifting each other up instead of tearing each uh, each other down. We promise to do our part, but we'll, we'll need your help to change the world. Please help us by joining the MTFU revolution by going to mtfunow.com. <clears throat> we have Praxy. If you haven't downloaded the Praxy app, go do that. P-R-A-X-E-Y. Uh, search for my site, Asshole Consulting. You can find that. Uh, and this allows you to contact me directly with your phone. It's expensive as hell. It's $2 a minute, but in case you have an emergency reason, you got to contact me. you got to contact me through the Praxy app. There are some things, though, gentlemen. It goes through the Internet. So you need to have good Internet access. Don't be driving through the middle of Iowa. Well, I lost it because then you got to reconnect, and then there's a reconnect charge, and then we got to refund you that reconnect charge because I'm, you know, I'm not an asshole that much. Uh, also, have your question ready. I love making money. I love making other people's money. It's great. But I feel bad like if I if you if you spent 10 minutes thinking about your question and you made it succinct, then you contacted me through Praxy uh that it would be a lot cheaper for you and I could solve your problem just the same. I had one guy talk for an hour and a half. And I used to I I used to think, oh, I can handle this, but there's no problem. Yeah, I'm making how much money? I'm just like, yeah, that that wasn't worth it. It wasn't, you know, I almost felt bad, like it cost that guy that much money. So please think about your question first before contacting me. Otherwise, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com if it's not an emergency. You can always contact me there, and that's a little bit cheaper because of the <clears throat> there is no connection cost. Uh, then we have my books. If you really are in no rush, like you don't even need asshole consulting, but you got some issues, well, maybe some of my books might help. Reconnaissance Man, The Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty. Remember, because I'm racist and I don't like minorities. Black, uh, bachelor Pad Economics, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. I hope uh, Miss Carr reads that one. I'd love to see her. Maybe there's too much economics on that one. Maybe too many statistics. Uh, enjoy the Decline, Curse of the High IQ. That's for all you smart people out there. Which, if you want, Am I smart? Yes, you are if you're listening to this right now. You are smart. Poor Rich's Retirement. Uh, that one's a really good one. Am I missing one? I think that's all of them. Check them out online. They're available in audio, Kindle, and paperback. Or, yeah, paperback, audio, and Kindle. Um, I put them in audio because I know reading sucks. So you could just, <laughs> you could just, I don't know why anyone reads anymore. Like a book, I mean. Just put it on your phones and go. Now you got Ed Lattimore, who's a weirdo. He needs to curl up with a good book. He has to actually have it in his head. I don't get that. I'm like, no, I will listen to an audio book any day. Anyway, they're available in different formats for your convenience. If you have read them or you're about to read one, please review them online as well. That actually does help uh, down the road with marketing and sales. And give an honest review. Don't only have five stars because uh, he's really great. No, give an honest review. At the same time, well, he clearly is a dick. Uh, one, uh, he didn't talk about this. I didn't like it. Because people could kind of see through that. 
We have other people's books, Run Guts, Pull Cones, and Pushing Rubber Downhill, both by Adam Piggott, who you can visit at pushingrubberdownhill.com. He came out with a podcast that I can't download because you have to sign in through Facebook, and something's happened with the login on SoundCloud. It's a pain in the ass. I don't like listening on the SoundCloud player. I like downloading it, putting it on my Android phone, and listening to it there. I know I have unlimited bandwidth on my phone. I just don't like... I think they're still going to get you. You know, like, oh, you went over the secret bandwidth limit that we had for you. Here's an $827 bill. Fuck. New uh, sponsor of Personal Liberty. This is the book of Personal Liberty, The Truth of Motor Vehicle Infractions, written by Verl Engel. I read through it. Uh, I got to do a review of it later on. Um, And uh, it's not for everyone. I'll just be honest with you. This is going to be for those of you who have an interest in law. And what it is is basically a case or a treatise on how uh, states and local governments do not have the right, actually, according to the Constitution, to demand you have a driver's license. Now, I am no lawyer, and I read through it best I could, even reading through some of the the cases he cited. Um, it, and what I like about it is it's, it's a very well put together argument and it does raise some interesting questions like, yeah, could I go through this? And he even provides us a chapter here on how to contest your tickets in court. And he even says, oh, you might get busted for contempt of court and the, the, the judge would get really pissed off. You might go to jail. It's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll just pay the $73 fine for failure to stop or something. Uh, but like I said, it's an academic or intellectual pursuit, not one of practicality. So if you happen to be a, a lawyer or just be interested in law, or you're stuck in jail and you've got nothing else to do because you've got a vehicle infraction and you're in contempt of court, uh, go read through this book, uh, Of Personal Liberty, The Truth About More Motor Vehicle Infractions, available in paperback and Kindle, online through Amazon.com, of course. Uh, Roll Tomasi's The Rational Mail, dot com, his website. You can also buy his whiskey at tapwhiskey.com, spelled without the E. And Positive Masculinity, his latest book, I think that makes it number three, uh, written by Roald Tomasi. Our good friend Marcus Brown's book, another book niggas ain't gonna read. Uh, If you happen to be of the black persuasion, or you happen to be of the not black persuasion, you just want to read about black culture. And um, if if you're not black, it's it's an interesting read anyway, because you look at these scams and rackets that go on in the black community. Marcus grew up in Southside Chicago. Um... And I even had to call him like, Marcus, did, really? Really? This is a thing? People fall for this? He's like, oh, dude, you have no idea. So uh, obviously it's targeted towards a black audience. Uh, but if you happen to not be black, that shouldn't deter you from buying this book any, anyway because you're kind of like, wow. <laughs> like, when your mom's using your social security number to get a credit card and ruins your credit even before you're 18, you know, you're kind of like, oh, maybe there's some other, maybe there really is a disadvantage there. Maybe there is one. It has nothing to do with your own mom screwing you over. Not Marcus's mom didn't. He did. I'm just saying he's highlighting different things that uh, face uh, poor black people every day. So, or here you got a choice. All right, you guys can listen to Sarah Carr about how to get out of poverty, or you can read Marcus's book. Guess which one has more research and evidence and empiricism? Trade the Ratio by our good friend Glorious Carl. If you're interested in getting into investing in precious metals, read that book first. The first half is an introduction about why you should invest in precious metals. The second half is a trading strategy. It's optional if you want to make a little bit of money because when you buy precious metals, they just sit there. They don't pay dividends. Um, So the second part of the book is a how-to trade in and out of gold and silver and make a little bit of money. I want to uh, promote this book because I haven't promoted it in a while. You stopped paying quite some time. That's that's the nature of the gig. No... no, uh, personal fallout between me and, and uh, SP Daily. But I forgot, I saw this on, on my bookshelf. I'm like, oh, that's a good book, so I want to promote it again. Welcome to the Divide by SP Daily. And I looked it up, and it's like five millionth place, two reviews, and that's a shame because it really was. That's, I think, the last book I read for pleasure, uh, and it was really good. That was a mind fuck. Very interesting <clears throat> concept. I know for, the, for those of you who want to do post-humanism, where you think you're going to go on into the digital world, you will want to read this book. Very good book. And very good action kind of in there as well. Uh, viral Podcasting by Kerry Lutz, our good buddy over at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. You can check him out. 
his podcast and his website, uh, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. But he has a book out. If you want to become a podcaster, check in to Viral Podcasting. Find that available on